Hey. All right, welcome Hi. to Around the Mic. Loud Mike now. is back again. <laughs> hey, Mike. Oh, my gosh, we missed you. Yeah. Huh? Where was I? I'm you Heather. were in Disney. That's right. I'm Heather DeLuca. With me, as always, is The Mike Show, Mike Richmond, and Social Spring Gonzalez. And Hello. we're here to chat. We missed Mike last week. Matt Ryan was Please a stop good... That. Wait, was you can it? hear me breathing? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little stopped up today. He is. It's so uncomfortable in these headphones. Are you able to breathe through both nostrils? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> what I deal with all morning long. All right, let's all take a breath. Let's all take a breath. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about, I don't know, Super Bowl today. We're going to talk about the afterlife. Ooh. Things like that. Can I get a little Ooh. juice on my headphones? I think that I'm on that annoying. Oh, yeah, there, there I am. There I am. Hey, thanks. All right. She's so. like a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> She's, ready. <laughs> She's ready to drop some heat on us. Turn up my headphones. Okay. The first thing that I want to know today right. is because according to a survey out of California State University, researchers there um, have unearthed something called friendship chemistry, which means that friendship at first sight is as strong as love at first sight. They're saying that you would know within seconds of seeing somebody if you're destined to be friends with them. Hmm. Do you agree with that? Yes and no. I guess it doesn't apply to everybody because one of my good friends, Stephanie, I was friends with her off the bat because she's insane. And I knew her and I were going to be friends. Now, my other best friend, I didn't like her. I actually hated her. In the beginning, right? Right. I've ha I have a couple situations where people that I'm very good friends with now, uh -huh. I don't want to say we're adversaries to begin mm -hmm. with, but um, there was a little friction yeah. there in the beginning. And I guess, like, I don't know. It's like with same sex, you know, when you're making friends with the same sex, it there's a little bit of feeling each other out, yes. you know, before... Because we need to know that we're not competition to each other. It's yeah, weird. I don't know why it has to be... Is it the same for guys? I have no idea why it's like that. Like, Mike, have you ever, like, just kind of not gotten along, like, thought somebody in, like, the group or a guy that you met was, like, a tool to begin with, and then you spend more time with them, you become bros? Like, what do you think? Do you believe in friendship at first sight? No. <laughs> Would you like to elaborate? <laughs> Be more specific. Uh, it seems to me, friends, you're sort of eased into a friendship mm -hmm. uh, relationship type situation to where uh, you find out, well, at least for me, I sort of gravitate to people little by little, mm -hmm. and it's not a whole bunch all at one time because I'm very cautious. And so if I'll see somebody and I'll stand back and I'll observe, and even if they, I share uh, the same sort of interests uh, with somebody, I won't necessarily call them up tomorrow and say, hey, let's go have lunch. I'm the same way, yep. And so um, I don't know. Uh, I, I would think just from a pure relationship standpoint, what's the difference? Whether it's boyfriend, girlfriend, or just friends, friends. Even of the same thing. I mean, a relationship's a relationship. I guess they're saying yeah. that there can be the same sort of, like, physical reaction or, like, chemical reaction to, like, when you see somebody like that you might want sight. to be, like, romantically involved with. Some of those same chemicals and emotions come up when you meet somebody that you might want to be friends with. To me, there have definitely been a few times where, like, you meet somebody mm -hmm. and it's just like, oh, my gosh, we're going to get along swimmingly. Right. And then you I've start to make those. You start to date them. Do you know what I mean? Yes. You started. So, oh, you guys want to go get coffee You're or like, like yeah, you want to hang, hang out. out? Like, let's go get drinks after work or something. I do believe it's a court. There is a certain courting ritual that mm -hmm. goes along with a new budding friendship and there have been ones that have started off like really kind of cool and then it builds up or it kind of like chills off like it cools That's off happened to me where it's like oh okay and then and then some of those feelings come up like oh did i do something wrong like did i say something wrong like why like I why try not to think about it too much because i'm the same way as mike if i just meet you and we click we can click like same friendship at first sight if you text me the next day to hang out that turns me off why do you want to hang out so fast i seem to why be do more, you want to get to know me <laughs> i seem to be more cautious about Is gaining a, a friend than i am gaining and i have to think back to when i was single Aww. than i was gaining somebody to date agree oh wow that's really i'm bad. a lot closer with my friends than i am yeah. with 
like as a significant other. Well, he's at saying that point. he might be like you were more you weren't as cautious with like dating a girl as you were making friends. I would have taken anything I could get when it comes to dating. <laughs> Understood. No, I get it. All right. One so, night, I mean, seriously, how many times do you have a friend for just one night? <laughs> That's true. That is um, true. Touche, my friend. Unless touché. you talk about the girls you meet in the bathroom that you become friends with and you never see them again. Right before I got thrown out? <laughs> I didn't so see weird. the sign. Right. Somebody said the one on the left. Right. Uh -huh. Wasn't my fault. Yeah. Oh, speaking of. And it didn't tip you off, the whole group of girls inside. Mm -hmm. After a while, it did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speaking <laughs> of Lamore. Yes. Okay, so um, the uh, flight attendants for JetBlue have been voted the um, most attractive looking of any U.S. airline carrier. Cool. Um, and I got to thinking because, like, Mike just came, you know, round trip on an airplane from to and from Disney. Yes. Have you... 22nd row. Have you <laughs> ever... <laughs> right on the wing? Woo! Just behind the right wing. Right on the... All right, that's yes. where you want to be. If the plane breaks <laughs> apart, that's your best chance for survival <laughs> is on the wing. But um, have you or would you ever... And be honest here, been or tried to become part of the Mile High Club. Oh, in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Just to say I well, did like, it and Mike get away with it. Mike just flew on Spirit Airlines, which means the size of the loo is half the size of any other airline. Not which means room. it's the size of an envelope. You can manage. <sighs> you can manage. If you what? want it, you figure it out. Is that something? Are we talking commercial airliner or private plane? Who's been on a private plane? I have a friend who flies private. He's a pilot for yeah, private but, jet. So uh, you 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 go you fly private? Sometimes he'll call me. You know, if, if it's a short trip, I and can't he'll say, tell "Hey, if you're serious right now." Yeah, really? I'll give him a call. Like, yeah. are we talking like a G six, G four, G five? Like, yeah. or are we talking like a prop no, he, plane he with propellers? Out. He's texting. No, uh, he's you texting. know, proper. Uh, he's flown celebrities. He's flown. You mentioned uh, Puff Daddy, P Diddy, mm -hmm. Sean Combs. He's flown him before. Okay. He flew uh, the Manning brothers. That's All right. Cool. Well, I guess I guess I on a I, regular commercial. I flight? guess I'm asking on a commercial flight because okay. I think just like in the bed, if you're in, ooh, oh, he oh. has him in the phone <laughs> the as pilot. the pilot. Um, I think that if you're like in the back of a limousine or like right. on a private plane, like you are, you've got a abundance of room. room. Right. Heather needs a lot of room. I need a lot of room. <laughs> um, but what about just a standard, like, yeah, commercial airline? She's a lot of room to run. Vacancy. <laughs> 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 I'm having all these mental images that I'm trying to push out of my head, and he's just going to add I need, on to I it. need room to dig. Oh, my you know? God. <laughs> I need room to dig. Personally, if I had the opportunity, I would take it. I would do it. Uh, not really a particular interest to me. Because usually when I'm flying, I'm uncomfortable. My ears are stopped up. My ears are popping. Uh, I don't getting being in an airplane doesn't put me in the mood. All right, mm. so you're just trying trying to survive the flight. For to me, me, that's just transportation. It's like the rush of you're not supposed to do it. So, There's a whole plane full of passengers, but you're in the back being naughty. Like that sounds fun. Would like, you would you ever do it? Say outdoors. Can well, you become a member of the outdoors. Club. I mean. <laughs> They're high five. Well, I mean, this is the one my parents don't listen to. <laughs> Spring's yes. parents. Oh gosh. Um, Stop the podcast now. Stop. Just hit pause. Just to end. When I was exit. in my mid twenties, I was quite the exhibitionist. See, it's just, it's just the thrill of like someone could catch you, but maybe not. Flashing a cab driver on South Street in Philly to get him to like pull over because it was starting to rain and we needed to get a Epic. cab. Look at yeah. her. So Look at that. that. Heather I was, what happened? That was what happened? Wild. Um, I was with the same guy from the time I was 17 until I was 25. Oh, so okay. when that ended, I felt like I was like liberato. That's I was like, let me, me go. I, I dropped like 25 pounds. The uh -huh. shirts came up to here. The jeans went down to here. I just like, I don't know. I felt like free. That's exactly of all what that. I did. And so I guess I just kind of like broke out of my shell a little bit. And yeah. You dropped tore, dead weight. That's what tore happened. Tore down those walls. Yeah. Tore down those walls. Get me outside and I, look out. I don't know how this turned. This was like my question to you guys. <laughs> you guys want to join the Mile High Club? Now I'm outing myself. Yes, I, I got both of them in trouble. If my mom hears this, I would have such a quick like flashing on my phone. So I guess <gasps> technically the Mile High Club would be outdoors. It's outdoors. It's in the air. 
my Love heart. lift us up where we belong. <laughs> up in the air, like Heather's legs up were. Up in the air. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right. And, end topic. End topic. End topic. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I have nowhere to go for me. Like, all right, I need to like drop the mic and like leave. <laughs> Woo. Okay. So you had asked the question, what would you want to do with your remains? Oh yeah. After. Oh yeah. You died. My question was, um, what do you want done with you when you That's die? That's right. It's plain and simple. So. Have you ever given any thought to it? I mean, you're a young oh, girl. Yeah. Every day. I thought about it when I found out that we could possibly die in 2012. So I was 12 years old and I, 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 I started that. my planning then because, I mean, mm -hmm. you never know. Mm -hmm. So I told my cousin that she is in charge of my final prank before I die. And I want her to rearrange my face and everything to creep people out at my funeral. So it's frozen in place. So it's forever scaring people. Oh. I mean, it's not my body anymore. I'm gone. Okay. So you're you're once you've flown the coop. If right. You will. Either that. You're just a shell and they could do it with whatever. Or I want a weekend at Bernie's type of deal. Where we just carry you around. Prop kind you of. Yeah, like I'm still like there, but not really. And it's kind of weird. Like you're attending your own part funeral. Of the, yeah. Like and yeah. no one's like allowed to cry. It's supposed to be happy. I want oh, chicken yeah. wings served. It has oh, yeah. to be good. Now, the other option was that I read somewhere that you can have yourself cremated and turned into jewelry. You can. My friend Teresa said that she wants me to be a, like a diamond or pendant so around her So I'm sending out earrings, pairs of earrings to yeah. my friends. My mom sent me wear. this thing. Uh, where you can get your ashes turned into this like orb, like one of those heinous looking things that people have in their gardens, like atop that bird bath where it looks like this big, like glowing orb. She's like, this is how Kind you're... of like the orb in the Wizard of Oz. This is, yeah. Like this that? is like, this is what we, ma, your dad and I would like to have. I'm like, ma, what if someone like bumps into the thing and it gets knocked <gasps> on the floor and like shatters then what am i supposed to do now i have to like dust pan you up and throw you away and she's like ashes to ashes yeah it's just like, like a urn same thing happens with an urn there's have you ever it's seen odd. why did i get married Two, the second one i don't i would have had to see why did i get married one well there's a part where she's on the beach and then all of a sudden just sand hits her face but it turns out it's not sand. It's an old <gasps> couple sprinkling no! ashes into the water oh and it hits her in the face. My worst <gasps> nightmare. I yeah, feel like might. that would be the worst thing to happen. I don't know why that came to mind. So so would you be buried or cremated? I, I can't decide whether I want to be interred. Is that the right Buried? term no i want to be in like a mausoleum oh, yeah in the, that's in one the of the my options right yeah. Yeah. In the i want to be in the exactly. drawer but i want to i really would like to like have say over who's like on top of me i don't care who's on side of me but like i don't want to like, i don't think you can pick that i don't think you can pick that either <laughs> pick, what if i buy the plot neighbors? above me for sean okay you can your do husband? that yeah what if he wants to be on the bottom well now he has to deal with it for eternity that he's always on top and now we're back to my sex life <laughs> okay no but that's but that's inside but anyway. Oh wait, wait, wait. Um, I think I want to be buried on top of the grave. I want to be just right <laughs> on the ground. I want to be like well, taxidermied that you said. and that laid is, down no, no, on, no, no, on top no. of it. They're so he weird. Wants to be stuffed. Like a, a plexiglass case on me, so little oh squirrels and stuff can't can't eat at me. No, but they'll sit on top of you and poop on you and everything. Well, this is long I'm in a plexiglass case. Okay. There's well, actually Spring and I will come by with a bottle of Windex is every now and again and a church in New York. <laughs> it's Mother Cabrini Church, and they actually have mo the real body of Mother Cabrini in the church in a plexiglass. She it's looks so a natural. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. looks so natural. But you she? can Freaky. see her. She looks fantastic. No, I don't like it. It's so <laughs> weird. So I would, if they still did it, I would be mummified. But I thought sarcophagus is when they decorate it. Like I didn't think it was a plexiglass. Well, King no, Tuck. effigy is when they decorate it. Sarcophagus is the actual. That's the thing. Yes, that's it's the like thing. It's like King Tut. That's yes. a sarcophagus. Yes. Right, the but hers. Thing. No, but she doesn't have that. She's got nothing. No, she doesn't have that. When I was in the, uh, I was in St. Peter's at the, mm -hmm. the Vatican. They yeah. have a dead yep. pope. Exactly. He's in, so a, he's in a thing, and there's like a little window there. You can see him. Yeah, yeah. if, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I I'm think that's show you the sarcophagus. Right okay. Um, I think like if something were to happen to me, Right now, Ugh. she looks so What do natural. they call it? It's like a clear coffin. Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of like, like the Pope was in. in yeah, uh, St. Peter's. Look up yeah. the term sarcophag. Sarcophagus. They call sarcophagus. it a shrine, and I call it okay. Creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I think if something were to happen to me right now, I would want to be like cremated, and then like I want to be able to like I don't 
want somebody to cremate me and then put me in the ground. Like I want to be like on the TV set or in the living room mm -hmm. where I can watch my shows and like see everybody coming and going. You would want a little window in the box so you can see out. Everything cremated except your eyeballs. You're just sitting that up on top is of the Well, wait. So Here's creepy. the thing. <laughs> if I'm an organ donor for everything but my eyes because I don't really believe in an afterlife, but if I'm wrong and there is one, I want to have my eyes to see. Like, I don't want to go through the afterlife without eyes. Mm -mm. So I'll donate everything but my corneas. Reasonable. Okay, thank you. Um, but you see my face? The only reason why I don't want to be in the ground is because I'm afraid of bugs. Bugs? Yeah. You're so, dead. I know, Doesn't but make a difference. I'm going to be eternally afraid of bugs. No, you won't. You'll be dead. You'll be eternally dead. Why you had to say it like that? <laughs> so, so you, so you won't worry. It would make me feel better so, to know. Okay. So, do you want to be cremated, or do you want like? Uh, in all seriousness, I think I because this could go on record in case anything ever happens to any one of us. Yeah. This is our wishes, uh, right? I mean, how often do people visit a grave? You you have and the best intentions. So expensive, and you do it a lot in the in the first year right. and then time goes by and then and you with best intention and then you just don't time lapses so go ahead and cremate me but i've my ultimate thing is to be cremated and my ashes sprinkled in thingvalir iceland that's really cool because oh, i thought about nice. being tossed off of the love bridge in um into the sen mm -hmm. in paris in paris yeah i don't know if we need do we need a permit for that we'll have to look into that but you uh, might. I would so come on vacation to see your ashes spread. Just dump it. Yeah. And, but, I'm going to die before you, though. So and it's okay. Iceland, I have this sort of a spiritual connection with Iceland. And uh, Thingvalir is a very spiritual place in I Iceland. And it also, uh, in Thingvalir, they have a park there. And it is the meeting point of the two continental plates of Europe and North America. No way. That's so cool. And I was born in Europe but have lived in North America most of my life. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be a fitting. And it's like a that. beautiful place, too, if you if you Google Thingvalir, Iceland. And uh, it's they have a big valley with lakes and there are mountains in the background, a little church uh, down by the river. It's really nice. I, I want to so visit nice. Iceland. I like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah. But I know that I do want to really, like, I don't want, like, a church service. Mm -hmm. Like, even if I'm going to be cremated, I'd like there to be some sort of, like, memorial service where hopefully, cross my fingers, people actually get up and tell nice stories about me. Oh, my God. And I, mm, and I want, like, stories. trays of past champagne. I want chocolate-covered strawberries. I want See, party. I would love all of that. Everyone has to wear pink. But I know my family. Like, I... <laughs> We have this joke that usually everyone in the Bronx is they have their funeral services at this place called Ortiz Funeral Home because they're all over the Bronx. And I guarantee it's going to be an all day thing. And they're going to go and get Cuchi Frito food, which is basically like fried Spanish food. They're going to talk crap about me. How <laughs> dare they? And I know, dead. I know my cousin will Should be a that? sobbing mess. She's going to be the only one just uncontrollably crying. Like, I feel like if they close the casket on me, she's going to try to jump into it. Because we have this we have this promise that if one of us goes before the other, the other has to jump into the funeral fire. That's the running joke. Because, you know, back then, women didn't really have that many rides. Like, this is, like, during, like, like ancient times. Like, uh -huh. way, way back then. So you either had two options. You either lived as a widow and you had to beg for money because you couldn't get a job. Or you jumped into your husband's funeral fire. <gasps> so we always had a joke ever since then that if one dies, the other one will jump into the that funeral fire. That sounds awful. We obviously are not going to do it because I asked good. her recently and I said, well, so who do you think <laughs> who do you think's going to go first? She goes, my God, I hope it's you. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like knowing my family is just going to be a sarcastic mess. It's going to be really funny, but I know my cousin's going to be a hot old mess. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. I have a question. Okay. And I know Heather is passionate about this oh, answer. Right. Pineapple on pizza. Oh, God. It go okay. This has yes been no. an argument on Facebook for months. No. I think this is very, like, love-hate thing. Like, I don't understand why, why, why. Like, first of all, cheese and pineapple don't go together. Mm. Sauce mm. and pineapple don't mm. go together. So Have you had a Hawaiian pizza? So good. I can't do, I can't even, I can't reconcile the taste of that, like, acidic. It's amazing. Her body will not allow pineapple. her to enjoy it. I said the same thing until my brother looked at me and said, try it. He said it just like that. Try it. 
and it was hot, warm pineapple with ham slices. Oh, I'm hungry. Yeah, you gotta have the ham Cheese. in there too. Makes a difference. Oh, and, and the then the sauce. ham. All right, the ham and the pineapple. Oh, I will give you so good. because those two seem to be married together. Whenever there's like a ham cooked, there's pineapple slices on the top. Okay. Throw some cherries but it in the mix. Doesn't belong on a pizza. Yes, it does. When, once you taste the magic, you understand. I, if I get, if I decide to get like a piece, piece of the, um, what is it, like margarita pie, where it's just mm -hmm. like the basil and slices of tomatoes. Mm -hmm. If the slices of tomato are too sweet, I cannot even eat the pizza. Like the sweet with pizza and the savory of that doesn't match to me. And I usually like sweet, salty, like together. Mm -hmm. I can't, like, I can't I do it. it. it the, just the smell makes me. Have Ooh. you ever tried it? Have you ever tasted pineapple on pizza? Nope. Mm. I think if Can't we get my favorite pizza place in South Jersey mm -hmm. is they also have one in Hoboken too, but in Atlantic City, Tony Bologna's Pizza. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. They put together. They have like, unusual combinations. Oh my gosh! Like just go to their website, Tony Bologna. Um, they the creations of pizza they come up with, like ravioli pizza, like mm. it's insane. I bet if I call Mike at Tony Bologna's Pizza, he could make you a pineapple a pizza with pineapple on it. That you would that just I would eat. that you would just backflip over. I think so too. I've actually been really wanting to go to that place. I it's say, like a challenge. Say we're taking you to lunch soon. Okay. Hey. Spring's paying. <laughs> That's a joke. It was, it was our idea. It's our idea. That's funny. <laughs> um. Oh gosh. I mean, everybody has their like unconventional thing, but I really if have you can to put draw sard the line if in. you can put sardines on pizza. Who you does can, that? You should be able to put. Uh, crazy pineapple people. on pizza. Yeah, crazy people know. put sardines Whoever on put pizza. Whoever puts salt, ugh, this, ugh. it's is, salty cat food is what it tastes I like. Just, I could never stomach it. I've never had a sardine, but looking at it alone. Uh, anchovies is kind of like mm. where I draw the line. Yeah, same thing with that. to me. Anchovies. And I would never put them on pizza. Like Capers. I'm not a big fan Ooh, of either. Oh, I love I like capers. I've never had it mm. on pizza, but I'm willing to try. I had capers at brunch this past Sunday. She the little it. caviar, a little toast, Ooh. little creme fraiche. It oh. was very high end. It was very fancy. It was very yeah. high end. Um, Look at you. I'm oh back in row 22 probably, at the plane. I, pro <laughs> <laughs> I probably don't even like it. I probably just like that it's like... Fancy. fancy. Yeah. No, I do like capers. They're just like, oh, just little salty pops. Mm. We usually put it in our rice sometimes. Oh, really? It's really good that way, yeah. Mm. With uh, pigeon peas. It's pigeon good. Peas. It's good. All right, well, I will, Um, I, I, I always say with food, I don't have to like it, but mm. I have to try it. Yes. So I promise you, at one point, whether it's Tony Bologna or right. somewhere else, I will try pineapple pizza. That's what my grandmother you know. used to say. She said, you, you cannot hate something if you don't try it. I'm yeah, like, you don't know unless you try it. Good point. If you'd like to suggest where we can get the best pineapple pizza, I threw out Tony Bologna's because it's just, they're just anything they make. Sure. I just want to try. Sure, if that's your go to, and I don't really yeah. have a frame of reference. So, uh, comment uh, right below the, the podcast here. That'd be cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. That'd be good for sure. And actually, I think wh why don't we put a poll into the blog when we do this podcast to ask what your like unconventional. Um, snack is like what mm. what what's like your unconventional snack combination because that would be neat well for the past i'm not proud of this so there was a sale on oreos at acme sale <laughs> it was a dollar 98 for a full pack okay <clears throat> and i saw pretzel thins and i thought oh, okay pretzel thins are kind of like not bad for you and you have so the oreos so i combined oreos them together with pretzel thins? so last night i got home i made salmon and string beans i'm like oh all right, perfect way to end the night. And then I had a row of Oreos with uh -huh. milk uh -huh. with pretzel crisps. A row. That's what happens. I eat. I will <laughs> this eat. This my second time I will eat this week doing this. A healthy dinner and then binge <laughs> on dessert. Like it's so bad. When I tell you, my stomach was just destroyed. I'm sure. How could it not be? <gasps> oh, and then you wonder why I was so nauseous two days ago. I know. Because of things like this. Because this is what I do to my body. All right. Well, speaking of Super Bowl Fifty One, this coming Sunday. L I, please. <clears throat> L I. He needs to speak yes. in Roman numerals. All right. Super Bowl L I doesn't quite have the same ring to it, but um, any predictions for Gaga songs that you think she might throw into her set this Sunday? Good question. Like, is it is it really the audience for like Bad Romance? <laughs> I just yeah. hope she doesn't do what's what's her what's her new song? The Million Reasons? No. Yeah. God, There's no way she can't th I mean, they'll they'll start throwing beer bottles at her. I'll throw and, it at my with, TV. With reason. 
I would yeah. million, mad. There's a million reasons for Gaga to get yeah. off the stage. It's not a Super Bowl halftime. No. Get me up, beer drinking. No. I would so. kind of hope that she plays Bad Romance. Sure, she'll. I'm sure. Or she something that. from that album. Born This Way. No, that's overplayed. I'm over that. I'm just trying I'm, to think of what's really just dance. Obviously, I'm she's thinking that. that she's probably going to rework "Born This Way" into some sort of uh, protest kind of song thing. <gasps> Maybe. And that goes into my next question: Is do you think she's going to, or do you think the NFL is going to let her take some sort of political stance after that whole? No, um, she's going to. She the, said it. The whole thing with, you know, Beyonce. Well, the NFL last said year. we will not keep you from doing right. it okay but they're not going to sanction it right there so yeah. we will not con we will not tell you what to do or not to do okay yeah. well that's good i mean at least they're they're, they're leaving her room that for and did she say she was going to do something okay i think i saw that she was going i to, hope she doesn't she intended to because you know, i said this earlier i just want to be entertained i'm exactly. so looking forward to what she's going to do because it could go any way you know lady gaga as of late has been really tame she's been focused on you know her songwriting well, you know she stripped away all the wacky costumes she's been but, hanging out with tony bennett so much but she, will she okay but will there be a return to that that sort of like Spectacle. The showmanship we, will be there. I yeah. think it's not going to be bizarre. It's not going to be like Elton John, uh, Donald Duck costume type of thing like she used to Gosh do. Gosh darn it! <laughs> but I think she's gonna she's gonna rock the halftime. Yeah. I just hope she gives us entertainment and not politics. So I googled it. There is no confirmation if she's going to say anything Trump related or anything okay. anti anything. Well, but there's petitions begging her to do it, which I think. Uh, why are you making a petition for that? <laughs> Correct me much. if I'm wrong. Was it um was it Budweiser or was it Pepsi this week that already pre-released their Super Bowl? Budweiser. Um, and it was very like, uh, anti. Ban. Yeah, ban on Im immigration. So what's the over under on how many or what other companies we think will make either political or anti-Trump Super Bowl ads? Oh, I hope I don't think too many. Yeah, I think we're going to be overrun with it. Most of them really? have already been really? in the can, as they call it. They've already been recorded, mm -hmm. already made. Right. So yeah. they, they they cost. I think it's something like two point five million dollars now to buy thirty seconds of ad time. And Budweiser said that yeah, uh, the the sentimental commercial will be about the founder of Budweiser and his immigration to America from Germany, but it's not meant to be political. It just happened to coincide with everything else that's going on. It's a on. very yeah. passive way of getting their point across. I, just, right. it, I don't want politics in my sports. I don't want politics in my entertainment. I'll take politics in my politics. I don't mind that. Right. But I, I watch sports and I listen to concerts and stuff like that to get away from all that. Sure. I don't want I don't politics even like when the, in when, the Super Bowl. When the league, when the NFL tells the players or finds them for excessive celebration like do it this is the nfl i want like showboating i that, want all of that i agree with the finding for the excessive Why? celebration stuff Why? because it takes away from the game you think it you think it's unsportsmanlike uh to a certain extent the intention could be unsportsmanlike but it also takes away from the game when you get into a 15 minute choreographed dance routine after okay, you take a well, field goal i mean no, yeah. throw the flag that is excessive you're right. like when randy well. moss like put the put the football down and diapered it like no. Pretended diaper. I loved it. They're like Terrell up. Owens goes and stands on the Dallas Cowboys star and starts See, doing the cheerleading. No, dance. that's poor like, sportsmanship. I, love it. I don't poor watch sportsmanship. enough football to even know that some guy actually put a diaper on a football. He pretended to like but he seems, put it down and like diapered it and carried it like. A I don't baby. mind like a little showboating, but if it. it goes over a minute or two, that's too much. You should definitely be flagged for that. Oh my god. Poor sportsmanship. <laughs> I think any sort and it's really of braggy over the top. Thing like that you know i teach my boys in sports they're just coming up in sports but i'm like enjoy scoring enjoy doing something good but don't make a big deal about it mm -hmm. let the score speak for itself you don't be looking like a jack wagon out there on the field well, like i, I, I understand it, it, the importance of teamwork and that you're winning as a team and and but when you get to the level where you're getting paid 10 15 million dollars a year mm -hmm. i just that I don't know professional sports is a whole other level to me like I want to be entertained I have a lot more respect for an athlete when they score and then run back get in the huddle or get back line and up just or go run, back to doing run back thing. off the run back off the field okay. right I understand what you're saying I don't mind a little celebrating just a little a little is fine you know, slam dunk over the uh, the field goal thing <laughs> Because it gets your fans riled up, I too, like, like the way Heather is right now. <laughs> like, she's ready. She wants to celebrate God, with you. Because nobody on the Philadelphia Eagles would ever do anything that cool. 
So I'm jealous. <laughs> I wish I watched so sports. We, I should probably make that can, a resolution this year. So we think I, think I might start that there's a possibility that there could be a number of these commercials, but we're hoping that there aren't. I'm hoping that there aren't. Okay. Because... I think there will be some, but hopefully not overflowing. Okay. Because you, know I mean? uh, you got to realize that for the uh, amount of people that support that, there are almost an equal amount of people who don't support it. Right. So, you know. Okay. Keep that in mind. All right. Well, we know that uh, Mike and Spring's little raw egg experiment in the microwave has mm -hmm. determined that the Falcons will likely be the victors of Super Bowl 51. We will see what happens. I'm predicting a decent game. I think it's going to be close. I hope it's close. a decent game. Don't you hate those those big championship games and it's a blowout? And yeah. Like, uh, Did that so happen boring. last year? I don't remember. The uh, It's like I barely. It's so crazy. Oh, like I barely even remember who like played. I, it was Panthers and Denver. Broncos. Yeah, the Broncos, Denver Broncos. I just yelled Broncos because I was proud to know what they were. Yeah, because <laughs> Pey Peyton Manning. They're orange and black. Yes. Yeah. White. Right. Orange uh, and blue. blue. Close, blue and white. close, close, close. You're good. But uh, <laughs> um, the last few Super Bowls have been pretty competitive. Yeah, I think I so. Right. Last I year was because Peyton Manning won and then retired. Yeah. Yeah. And this would be a record number of wins if the Patriots win the Super Bowl and the first time the Atlanta Falcons have ever won a Super Bowl. I know. So it's, it'll be cool. It's really exciting. Uh, it should be a good game. So um, if you want to see Mike and Spring's microwave experiment, just go to the wall of the Sojo Facebook fan page or fantastic. over to our YouTube channel. Anybody else got anything? It's like three minutes long and the anticipation of that thing exploding <laughs> is just... Uh, that was really video. fun. Yeah, it's like I kind of want to blow up eggs for fun yeah. and no reason. No. <laughs> <laughs> every reason. Like, Spring's yeah. like, oh, should I have... Um, what should, should I eat for breakfast? What should I eat for breakfast? Well, let the eggs decide. Well, Spring's ankle ever heal? Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all of a sudden, the eggs become our magic eight ball. Okay. <laughs> the I Ching of life. There we go. Uh, anyone else? We're going to end it there. Yeah. All right, then. Thanks for checking out Around the Mic. Thanks for subscribing. Make sure you share your share with your friends if you like it. want to tell you that Sojo1049 now has our brand new, I'm very sorry. own app. Someone I'm really distracted by really Mike's heavy. breathing. I've been holding my breath this entire time. <laughs> Well, you're pretty good. You're like Aquaman. <laughs> uh, we have a new Sojo 1049 app yes, where you do. can listen to the station now right from one touch on the home screen of your phone. Um, Mike and Spring, you can catch them weekdays 530 to 10 on Sojo 1049. And I will he won't talk be to breathing like later. that. Gosh, please. God, no. <laughs> Wait, one, one last breath. Deep cleansing breath, everyone. <clears throat> you're supposed to open your mouth for that one. That's how you're supposed to breathe. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. We're ne done. We're done. Next time. <laughs>